Welcome everyone. I am so excited to have my friend and a mentor and a teacher who's really helped me accomplish some things I didn't think I would ever accomplish. Frankly, I didn't ever think I'd have 400,000 views on our YouTube channel. Didn't think we'd reach, first didn't think we'd reach a thousand subscribers. Then I didn't think we'd reach 5,000. We're over 10,000 subscriptions now. And I mean, it's not all about those numbers, but those numbers mean something. And this is the guy who's helped me more than any other single human being get our act together. And we're, we're pushing forward into the new year with YouTube as our principal platform for creating content. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Kell. Man, Ray Edwards, I appreciate your kind words. Congratulations, 10,000 subscribers. Super cool to see what's happening with your YouTube channel and so grateful for you're the copywriting legend and you've really helped our business and our company and many of our team members as well. So super grateful to be back with you on the podcast. Well, and I'm excited about the things we can talk about today. And I wonder if we could start with this whole thing I was sharing with you just before we started that I, I've achieved some milestones we just mentioned that at one time, not that long ago, I thought were impossible. I thought I'd never get there. It seemed like the summit of a mountaintop. And then I get to that mountaintop and I start thinking, yeah, but this other guy I know has 50,000 subscribers or 100,000. Can, can we just start by talking about whatever medium we're using, how this comparison thing plays into our performance? Yeah, I mean, comparison's a big deal. And I think what could happen is, you know, a lot of people listening to this look up to you. You're just an incredible human and family man and business builder. And, and you're a hero to a lot of people, you know, and on the flip side, what can happen with comparison though, is that we, we can struggle with it at every level. And a lot of times people maybe would think you wouldn't deal with it, but you do, you know, I, I just crossed 3 million subscribers across multiple different YouTube channels, which is so wild yet. I can still find myself scrolling and see what somebody else is doing. And next thing you know, I'm having feelings of insignificance or jealousy or envy or just wondering, you know, this hits all of us. And so we've heard the quote, comparison is the thief of joy, but comparison also kills creativity. I think comparison is it's it, it dishonors God because it's it's really something that we're looking at somebody else's race when it, we really need to be focusing on our own race. And I think that's the big thing. It's it's being self-aware of the domain, the sphere of influence, what we're called to do. It's We don't have to be somebody else. We just need to be ourselves. We don't need to be somebody else. You want to be you times two. And there's a famous book, right? You were born an original, don't die a copy. And so, of course, we can look around about what everybody else is doing. But I found that, again, whenever I fall into comparison, it never, um, it never leads to a good place. And what I've also learned is you never actually know what's happening behind the scenes. You know, we compare our our blooper reel to other people's highlight reel. Most people are only posting their best moments on social media and maybe we slept in a little bit, you know, we haven't showered, back kind of hurts. We open up our phone, we start scrolling and we see somebody on some amazing vacation or that's doing something. And in this moment where we're feeling maybe a little down or discouraged or deflated, we're just looking at somebody else's moment, not really realizing what what could be happening behind the scenes. You and me both know we've met maybe many millionaire business owners that are miserable. So I think comparison is just never going to lead you to a good place. Uh, the think the key is to not let comparison stop you from creating content and just run your race, your pace. It's okay. Slow and steady wins. You might go viral or it might be brick by brick, but either way, focus on what the work you're doing and not what others are doing. And easy for me to say, but, but Ray, I struggle with this just like we all do. And I think it's something we need to be reminded about continuously. 100%. And I want to take just a moment to, to prompt everybody, if you haven't already gotten a copy of this book, let's see, this is better. YouTube Secrets. You've got to check this book out. It's in, it's the second edition now, right? Yeah, second edition. So it was really overhauled, three new chapters, 90 new pages, a whole bunch of new resources in the appendix uh, to help people with everything from 
getting the right mindset. We, we teach a framework, the seven C's of YouTube success. The first C is courage, getting over fear and punching fear in the face, as our friend John Acuff says, and pressing record. And, uh, and then also all the practicals. How do you set your channel up? A confused mind always says no. So if you want to start a YouTube channel, but you don't have a plan, then you'll freeze. Uh, but the goal of the book is to walk you through step by step from the mindset as well as the skill set to help you crush it on YouTube. You know, I've, the first person I think I ever heard say this was Tony Robbins. And he said at, at his business mastery conference that 80 percent of business success is mindset. Only 20 percent is execution. Do you do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. In fact, we use that in our community. We split the 80%. I agree with the 80%, but we actually split it into psychology and community, meaning um, it is your mindset. But I've also found that it's impossible to have a strong mindset without having a strong community. If you want your psychology to be strong so that you could take action on the 20% of the tactics and the strategy, you've got to work on your own confidence, your own inner game, your own bulletproof mindset, which is moving from scarcity to abundance, what's moving from fear to faith, what's moving from impossibility thinking to possibility thinking. But I found, at least personally, and the data would seem to show this as well as you look study this, is you're an average of the five people that you're around. Who is in your circle is absolutely going to affect your mindset. You know, I actually had a interesting 2022. And I'm sure a lot of people did many different challenges and and setbacks or adversities. Um, and and I was ending the year with the wind knocked out of me, kind of a pit in my stomach. I was in a funk, and it was I I actually Ray I I. I I couldn't get out of it. I mean, I was climbing out of it, but this was not just like take a nap and, you know, say a prayer and wake up. It was like a looming heaviness. And I recently just got back from spending a weekend at a, at a business event. Um, and it was a faith-based business event as well. So it wasn't just the intersection of good information of being able to talk therapy, you know, process things with, with other entrepreneurs but it was also this combination of, of prayer and time uh, spent with God. And I had a major breakthrough. That breakthrough happened in a community setting. I believe if we're going to really get the courage we need to chase our dreams and reach our goals, I agree with Tony Robbins. It's going to be 80% psychology, but I think at least half of that is activated in community. And, you know, from your, both of your and I's research, I believe this is the way that God created the world. I mean, we see this in the Bible. Like we see that he made us to be codependent, to be in relationship and to be in community. I think he set it up that we actually really will never live the ultimate life if we go it alone. There was a story from this past weekend of uh, somebody that had dealt with three years of just really being in a, a very dark place. And she admitted isolation was what kept her there, not leaning out, being vulnerable. And I think the key is getting around giant killers, lion slayers, possibility thinkers, people that are making moves, people that have been through pain and that have setbacks and that have challenges, but people that are going to get up, you know, though a righteous person falls seven times, they get up on the eighth and somebody that, and, 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 you know, a core, if two are better than one, if one falls, you have someone to lift you up. And so, yeah, I agree. The tactics, the podcast, your YouTube channel, your incredible copywriting book, the what to do is so critical. It's the tip of the spear, like that strategy piece, those tactics piece, but actually doing it, getting, getting the grit and the resilience and the follow through to not just do it today, but to do it month after month, year after year to build something significant, man, it takes psychology. It takes a bulletproof mindset. And I think you find that in community. That is so personal to me because I know one of the biggest, no, not one of the biggest, the biggest distinction that helped me get over some of the bumps I hit in 2022. I went through a similar period to the one you just described to yourself. Key distinction and better yet, key activity was 
becoming, we had a team. I had employees in my company, which I called the team, but really we had Ray running the team to do stuff for Ray. And the magic began to happen when I started letting go of some of that control and letting people rise to their abilities, rise to their calling, their creativity, and do the things they're good at, even if, even if I thought I could do it better. Because I might be able to do it better, but I can't do it all. And that was about insecurity in myself. And I've, I've, you've been a, a prime example for me of how to, to lead a, a, a team to enormous victories and you, you mentioned when one falls, another rises to take their place. I mean, I, I went through a major surgery not long ago and my team kept the business running. And that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't let go of it being about me and turned the focus on the people we're serving. So powerful. So can you share a little bit of the journey? There's, there's two major questions I wanna make sure we get to. One is the journey of, cause I know you started from, I started watching your channel when it seemed like it was just you and one other guy in like the loft of an apartment you were living in or something like this. That's when I started. And then I've seen you grow this, this amazing company, Think Media. You put on this amazing conference not long ago. You had Gary V speaking there among other illustrious speakers, experts, just an impressive group of people to learn from. And you seem to be thriving in all that. And it also seemed like it was seemed overwhelming to me what it would take to put together something like that. How'd you go from being a, one guy in a bedroom or a loft to building this company and then we'll get let's start with that and we'll get to the second thing i want to make sure we're talking about yeah ray it's a great question and and um you know today it is pretty overwhelming to see some of the impact that we've had whether it's the youtube channel growth or our book youtube secrets i think we're almost to a hundred thousand copies sold of the book um and that's just wild and been featured in different publications and and trying to figure out how to run a business of 20 w2 employees and 10 contractors but man i did not start there in fact i started really in the hardest time of my life uh the first youtube channel i started was 2007 for our local church small church an hour north of seattle um i had new, recently married my wife sonia but fast forward a couple years um we hit this incredibly challenging season first of all the housing market uh, crashed and we had bought a rental property and we were house hacking our main house. We didn't know the, the it's a popular term today. We didn't know the term at the time. We had another family living with us, three roommates, just to make this mortgage payment on declared income because we thought everyone in our community was like, appreciation is going to be nonstop. This is a good investment. And that was bad advice. Um, but uh, it is 100% our responsibility still, but we're getting crushed. A church I was part-time at was falling apart because some senior leaders stole some money and uh, just had kind of moral failure. And so that's devastating because it's people you've trusted or people you've learned from. But worst of all is my wife almost died. In 2009, she had, uh, we discovered later, she had gastroparesis, had dropped to 82 pounds because of throwing up 10 to 15 times a day from an almost you know complete paralyzation of her stomach after uh, going to a mission trip in the Philippines and probably getting a parasite or something. That's not what triggers, that's what triggers it. It's not actually the thing, but gastroparesis, about 5 million Americans have it. But because her weight was so low, they installed a feeding tube, jejunum in her stomach, but it was placed wrong. So instead of the food going into her stomach, it was going into her body cavity, which will suffocate your organs and kill you quick. And so I found myself by my wife's side in the hospital for six days. Finances are falling apart. We're going through this incredibly hard season with our faith community and these people that are so close to us. And she's on the hospital bed. They'd cut her open to clean out all around her organs and she's recovering. And I'm like, God, what is happening? You know, what are we going to do? And, and how are we going to get through this? And I actually am grateful because I did feel comforted um, by God to, to really call me to another level to say, man, you got a man up. What do you, you know, I'm going to take care of you, but, but you got to take care of your wife. So there was a spark and a fight that started in my heart that was like, okay, I have an option now. I could either get really bitter in this season. And that would be a very understandable response. I could get very discouraged. And I certainly fought that. And it was a huge weight, or I could start taking proactive action and so I had been 
doing a YouTube channel for my church, studying online marketing. And so I really tap deep into what I believe when it comes to overcoming anything. And it's this reasons come first, results come second. Like, what are the reasons you want to build a business? What are the reasons you want to be a freelance copywriter? What are the reasons you want to work from home? For me, I didn't want to start a YouTube channel for fame or for the clout or for amassing a lot of followers. Um, all of that stuff's fine, but I wanted to start, I, I was like, how am I going to pay medical bills? I was thinking, how can I work from home so I could be around my wife more? And how can I also use this thing that I had been studying and doing for my church and video production since 2003 to even serve people and do something productive and positive in this incredibly negative situation? So I started my channel, Think Media, in 2010, right around that time. And I had no clue what to do. My first videos were terrible. Your first videos are going to be your worst videos. I started trying to figure out how to earn money online with a uh, affiliate marketing because because I've been doing video production for seven years by this time, I was able to start reviewing cameras and lenses that I was using for shooting wedding videos or businesses for small videos uh, for small businesses and then have affiliate links in the description. And I will never forget the first affiliate commission I ever made. Let a drum roll proceed this statement. $2.12, right? I got $2.12 wow. from amazon.com connected to the YouTube videos I was making. And that did not even make a dent in our medical bills. Uh, it only paid for one third of my venti peppermint mocha ad shot at Starbucks. So it, it barely scratched the surface. But what was cool about that was, is it was proof of concept. It was, it was don't despise small beginnings. It was, oh my gosh, I just made $2 and 12 cents on the internet. And that's $2 and 12 cents more than my neighbors made, you know, today. And this was all the way back in 2010. So then I just went on this voracious journey. I still had another job. I worked at a church for uh, five more years as a director of communications, which was amazing because I was able to just learn more. And And uh, I really believe if you serve someone else's vision, that uh, it, it helps kind of position you to, to steward your own vision and um, learned a lot of skills. And at the whole time I was working on my side hustle, and that was my YouTube channel, Think Media. Like you said, when you discovered me, that was five, six years later when I connected with my friend Benji, who we just met in the same small town. And uh, he's the co-author of YouTube Secrets. Um, and and it was years of, of pain, mistakes, uh, a lot of dead ends, you know, making videos that didn't work. In fact, I have really like three failed YouTube channels before I got a successful one. I mean, that... It, it was. It wasn't just the first ver version. One point did not succeed, nor did version two point But I was on this relentless commitment, and it was fueled by my reasons for fighting for my wife and my our family and our faith and our future. You know, the root word of motivation is motive. Like when your motive is that strong, because I think if your reasons are like, I just hope to make a few extra bucks so I can just kind of like spend it on whatever. Maybe that'll keep you motivated, but it probably won't. But if you can dig really deep and ultimately, you know, uh, as a as a person of uh, strong faith, I know you are as well. I also believe that YouTube is a mission field. As a father now of a two and a half year old and a six month old, um, I am passionate about helping purpose driven people create YouTube channels that are putting positive into the world, family values, ethics, and morals. And frankly, Ray, I see 99% of social media influencers are not people I want my kids to follow. And I'm, I'm not trying to curse the darkness. I'm just trying to light a light. And I just think we need more purpose-driven people on social media platforms sharing messages of truth, of good and a lot of the values and lifestyles and attitudes that you find on YouTube, on TikTok. And I understand that people come from all kinds of different backgrounds and it's the world we're living in. But my motivation, my reasons have gone to a whole nother level that it's not just to build a business. It's not just to provide for our team. That is absolutely also our priority. 
Um, but it is that we really are on a mission to help purpose-driven people with messages that matter get those messages out on these platforms where unfortunately I think there's a lot of fake news and a lot of mistruth and a lot of um, content that is pulling people down, not building people up. And so uh, that has kind of been the fire on the journey that has brought us to where we are today. So just so people have a perspective, can you can you pull out some of the vanity numbers now and talk about where you are today as a company? And then I want to ask you about YouTube in general. 250 million views. I mean, 3 million subscribers across a couple different channels. Um, we also, though, have a, a pretty sophisticated business, you know, 100,000 books sold, maybe a quarter million people on our email list, clean that thing also a lot. Um, it, through an event with Gary Vaynerchuk, it was probably in one of, you know, our friend, mutual friend, Pete Vargas, said it was a million dollar event, did a million dollars in ticket sales. He said a very small percentage of events will ever even do that. I was like, you're the expert. I, that's cool. I mean, I, I was, I'm exhausted too, Pete. So, I mean, we did it. As you mentioned, it was, it was tough. Um, and so, you know, I think we did, uh, 6.8 million top line this last year. And so, uh, we haven't hit eight fig in a year, but we've done, um, it's a, a decent small business over, year over year, it's been going pretty good that regards. And we may, we continue to make progress and, um, and yeah. And then across platforms, one of the biggest opportunities is also vertical video. So we post 300 pieces of content a week right now. And we, YouTube, I believe is the greatest by far the data would support HubSpot CMO said that YouTube subscribers are the most valuable subscribers on the internet. So even with TikTok blowing up and who knows, it might get shot down, uh, shut down. Facebook Reels is one of the biggest opportunities right now. We've had multiple Facebook Reels go viral. Facebook organic reach is on this whole revival. Uh, Pinterest vertical video is a, a thing right now. I know people struggle with Instagram Reels, but Instagram. And, and when you're really creating smart strategic content, that also could be used for YouTube Shorts, Reels, TikTok. Um, there's no reason why it can't be posted on multiple platforms. So saying that, I, I mean, if you added up our total views, I don't know, maybe we're at a billion views or something um, from all of the different platforms. Uh, more accurately, probably like 500 million, but I haven't actually taken the time to, to really go count it up. And uh, so it's been a wild journey. Well, it's crazy. And what, what I want to what I want to zoom in on is what you said about YouTube being the you didn't say it exactly this way, but the place to build your your content base. I mean, that's what we're doing. So is that the answer? Because what I hear from students and, and people that we encounter so often is, I don't know what to do. Should I be on TikTok? Should I be on Instagram? Should, where should I start? And I feel we've decided as a company, I'm so, this is sort of a leading question because I have read the book and I listen to lots of your content, watch it. That's, that's a key distinction. I listen to a lot of your video content, but I think YouTube is the place. Can you speak to that? Can, can we jump in and be confident? If I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, I can start there. You don't start by publishing 300 pieces of content a month or a week. Did you say a week? Yeah, yeah, 300 a week. And and yeah, you definitely should not start there. Obviously, that's a, a, a team and uh, systems that took time to build. But yeah, you know, it's kind of like if you're going to build your brand online, you want to build a personal brand, you want to use these channels to market your business. Um, you want to build on a solid foundation and any structure is only as solid as the foundation. And the power of building on YouTube and starting with a YouTube first mindset is that if you do it right, it actually does make everything else easier. Now, I don't want to insinuate that this is actually easy. It is hard. And I I would hope that anybody listening, although I fall into this as well, is like, oh, is oh, the internet a cool way to like just spend 30 seconds, post a video and go viral and double my revenue? Like that isn't, that's a mythical unicorn. Like that doesn't exist. It, it's oh, the but same. What if I get, what if I get chat GTP to write it for me? <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, it's kind of the same as anything. Like if you don't start watching what you eat, it probably is not going to, you're, you're not going to lose the weight. Like you can't read about dieting. You actually have to do it. Like if you want to build muscle, but you never actually go to the gym and lift the weights, you're not going to build the muscle. And similar, if you want a strong marriage, 
but you neglect your spouse and uh, folk, you know, stay selfish and and never invest in the relationship, then you don't want to be surprised when the relationship is bankrupt. And the same is true is like this stuff takes work. But I think the key component is is vision is as having a vision for the opportunity waiting for you on the other side of committing to consistent content creation on YouTube. Where there is no vision, people perish. Where there is no vision, they cast off restraint, they cast off discipline. You want to have a vision that's so clear that is followed up by the discipline to say, I am going to commit to the habits and the routines of creating consistent content on YouTube. And why is it the most solid foundation? The reason why is when you start with long form content on YouTube, my number one recommendation is that people should start a video podcast, which is what we're doing here, because now that could be a YouTube video tapping into all of the search based opportunity on YouTube, the findability on YouTube. Not only that, YouTube is the number one podcast platform on the internet. That should shock people because people go, wait a minute, I thought I thought podcasts were Apple podcasts. I thought I thought it was Spotify. It is. But even but but in terms of how much time is spent consuming podcasts, YouTube is still larger for the creators who do create video podcasts. This is because a lot of very large podcasts, whether it's Logan Paul's Impulsive or H3H3 or Joe Rogan, even though it's just the clips and Valuetainment, Patrick Bet David, go down the line, Lewis Howe, School of Greatness. These are all video podcasts. So when you start on YouTube first and you turn the camera on, then you can also release that 20, 30, 40 minute podcast episode on Apple, on Spotify, on Google platforms. Okay, cool. So we've done that. But now you have the opportunity next to cut content out of it. You have created content that's at the top of, of a content pyramid that can trickle down. What does that mean? We could take this video and cut it into a four minute landscape video, meaning a, a highlight moment. One thing we talk about, maybe just the courage part, maybe just the, the comparison part like why comparison will kill your creativity and how to overcome it or something. That's its own standalone video. Now we could upload that not just on the same YouTube channel to get more views, more subscribers and impact more people, but also now that becomes an asset that we could upload on LinkedIn. We can upload that natively over on our Facebook fan page. But what's deeper than that is if we all we can cut out clips from this very video you and I are recording and we could turn it into a YouTube short and all that means is it's a 60 second vertical video. And, but YouTube short is, is just YouTube's way of doing that. Once we have the vertical video asset, you could throw that over on Instagram reels and throw it on other platforms. So what I love about YouTube is it can, if you, this is why it's a solid foundation. It is your home base. It's the number one video platform, 2.6 billion monthly active users. It's healthy. It's growing. Um, shorts is blowing up. I think it's like a hundred billion views a day or 200 billion. It's just wild, which would be again, the 60 second vertical video feature, uh, that they have there similar to like TikTok and these other platforms. Um, and it also is the most, uh, YouTube has the most valuable subscribers on the internet. The reason why is people are in a serious mindset on YouTube. So where I would say the other social media platforms, while all valuable, when you invoke, when you put your investment in the best investment first, and then you diversify from YouTube to Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest, which all might sound overwhelming, but as you start to see revenue come in and increase, you staff and you hire around this and you create systems around this, or you work with tools or agencies or all the above who, not how you put somebody over this eventually. And if someone's thinking, yeah, again, this is overwhelming. I'm already too busy. I can't do all this. No, you're thinking too, too small. You got to move into possibility thinking. How can I do all of this? Better in question, who could I hire to help me do all of this and to multiply my content across multiple platforms? And then you go all the way back to the vision. Well, again, why am I doing it? What's the point of it all? Revenue's increasing. Leads, customers, sales is increasing. Your personal brand is growing in value. Your trust, your authority in the marketplace, your thought leadership is increasing. And so it, the ROI, the return on investment in doing this is off the charts, but a lot of people won't because of the 
it, it, you know, it comes to the execution. And genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. It definitely takes some work. It takes some hustle. Um, and the cool thing is, uh, you know, it's not crowded on the extra mile. So those who lean, those who are listening to this right now and really lean into this, there's massive opportunity waiting for you in a 2023 world and beyond to um, execute this, start messy. You won't do it perfect. And the last thing I'd say is the mindset is a media company mindset. For a lot of people, the, the ROI gets even deeper when you realize it's not just more sales for your course, your services, your products, or your programs. You actually are starting a new company. It's kind of the better, you're starting a media company. If you just go, I wanna dabble on YouTube and just like start a little YouTube channel to bolt on to what I'm doing, that's fine. But the better way to think about it is it's its own company. And the reason that's powerful is because it can create new revenue streams. You've got ad revenue coming in from your YouTube channel. You have the opportunity to uh, talk about products you use, SaaS, software as a service, uh, e email marketing, CRM, uh, different tools that you use. J Jasper, I don't know if they have an affiliate program, AI copywriting or whatever. And you can link to that and you can earn money. So now you can add, in addition to your core business, extra revenue, which may be a trickle at a start at the start, but it can grow into really significant revenue. Think Media generated basically half a million dollars this last year just from the video views that we get on our videos. And so that also helps you be diversified and ultimately recession proof because you're now not dependent on just one stream of income, but you have multiple because you did the hard work of launching a YouTube channel, building systems around it to multiply your content around the internet and um, committing to building your brand or your personal brand with video. So powerful, and I want to circle back to the topic of courage because I think it takes courage for people to start if you're starting from scratch. It also takes courage, I've learned, every level when I want to go to a new level. It's like we just in the past six months, we've hired three different people who are making 60000 a year or more. That's for, for a lot of businesses, it's like so. That's, but it's huge for us. It's like that just took $180,000 off the table, and it, it takes courage and it takes commitment to those people to giving them the opportunity to grow. It doesn't matter where you're starting from or where you're growing from. Where do you find that courage to make the investment for the next level? I think uh, for me, courage comes from a couple of things. I think um, uh, number one, you just have to make a decision that you're going to pursue courage intentionally. I haven't found that courage just creeps up upon me and just attacks me and overwhelms me. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm just sitting there on the couch eating, you know, M&Ms, just watching random content and all of a sudden, boom, courage just hits me. I have found that I have to intentionally pursue it. So I think it's number one, make a decision. I think number two, I think it's committing to building your bulletproof mindset, um, which for me would be to starve your fears and feed your faith. You are what you eat. If you wanna build a bulletproof mindset, what you're consuming matters. Again, if I keep eating those chocolate covered M&Ms endlessly, not only is it gonna maybe affect how I look, it's all of that sugar is gonna mess up my nervous system. I'm gonna get a little short high and then a crash afterwards. You are what you eat. Well, this is also true. Uh, are we just out there just reading constant negative headlines? What are you consuming? You know, I just did a study um, of of a couple headlines of what the world is saying over 2023. And so here's a couple. Um, Fox Business said the majority of Americans fear a recession is coming. So that's cool. It's what a survey discovered. But what's interesting is it's such an interesting word there. It says the more a majority of Americans fear, which it's not acknowledge because we might acknowledge a recession is coming but it's our decision whether or not we're going to fear. I'm like Fox Business. Why are you Why are you speaking that over me? You know, here's one from uh, an, another one. World leaders meet as the global economy faces multiple threats: high inflation, food insecu uh, insecurity, possible global recession. Um, another one: even a glo a recession will not bring down inflation. And this is wild. 
WalesOnline.uk and Entrepreneur both agreed. They labeled this year. They said 2023 will be a year of fear. What? I mean, good grief! They, they labeled the year. So, so here's my thing: is 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 this the media knows that fear sells? It keeps people glued to it, and then it keeps them in a toxic doom loop of fud, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. But you got to starve your fears. And so if I'm starving my fears, it means I can't eat that stuff. And what I also should be eating is the truth or the other side of the coin, which is the, you know, things like this. Tube filter revealed 200 million people are earning money from digital content creation. 200 million. Being a content creator has become the fastest growing type of small business. That's signal fire. Forbes said 2 million creators are now making six figure incomes. The influencer marketing industry grew 20% in just the last year and is valued at 16.4 billion. Why does that matter? This is different than your business. The influencer marketing industry, Ray, is people that want to pay you to advertise on your videos and get in front of your community with the products and programs that can serve them. There's $16.4 billion flowing to creators and the middlemen last year, that's going to go up another 20% this year. Oh, Sean, how can you say that? We're in a recession. Okay, it's only going to go up 17.5%. We're still talking about billions of dollars, and that's one of 51 different income streams that we teach. And so so it's you are what you eat. What are you eating? What are you watching? And it kind of reminds me, uh, I think the last thing is it's not just what you eat, but we said it earlier, it's it's who you hang around with. You know, in the book of Numbers, there was 12 spies that were dispatched by Moses to scout out the land of Canaan for 40 days. And there was massive opportunity in the land, fruit, milk, and honey, but there was also adversity in the land. You know, there's like, oh, there's giants, there's large fortified cities. And if we know the story, there was the fear perspective. 10 out of the 12 spies said, we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And that's how they also saw us. Well, listen, if they're good spies, they weren't seen by any of the giants of the people in the land. In their own mind, they were like, we are small. We are going to lose. We cannot overcome the challenge ahead of us. What's fascinating is then they went back and here's what they did, right? They wept aloud. They grumbled against the leaders. They lifted their voices. It sounded like a news segment and the evening news, right? They focused on the past and the good old days. They actually wish they were dead. Some of us are hanging out with friends and maybe even family members, and that's what it's like having dinner with them. They're weeping aloud, grumbling, focusing on the good old days, wishing they were dead. Well, then there was another perspective, though. There was the fear perspective, but there was the faith perspective. And Joshua and Caleb were like, we should go take possession of the land. We can certainly do it. And they knew it that they could do it in God's po power and with God's strength. So I've just learned this. Ask, who is in your circle? Courage is contagious, but so is fear. Negativity is contagious, but so is faith. So get around people. And you're, I know you're already doing this. Like we're, we're speaking to a powerful community that you've built here. This is one of the reasons why they listen to this, because you're not going to be a purveyor of fear. You're not a fear dealer on this podcast. You're a hope dealer. And I, I think you got to guard your heart and guard your mind against cynicism, because I know that even some people there there's, there's that voice that's like, Oh, you're just, you know, you're just causing people, you know, like, False hope, false, false, you know, and I can even see some legitimacy to that. But the thing is, we just have a choice. I can either be like, if you tell people to go try, they, they might not make it. Yeah, absolutely. But here I can guarantee you won't make it if you never try. So I would much rather, I would much rather die in faith than live in fear. Oh, and so I am going to choose faith. And I'm going to be intentional about what I eat, about actually working on my mindset and my confidence, and about being thoughtful about getting in communities. And if someone says, you know, 
but I don't have that. I don't have access to that community. Just be intentional to keep pursuing it. You're listening to this podcast. It's what you're reading, you know, link arms with a local church community that, uh, you know, that can feed your faith and then be intentional to get into groups and meetings and masterminds. You know, you and I spent four years together praying every Monday on a zoom groom and, and seasons change. And that, that has transitioned, but that was an answer to prayer for me. I yeah. felt alone for a decade that I never and and I and I never stopped pursuing a community. It wasn't just like, oh, this was super easy. You, you went from zero to all of a sudden you're surrounded by giant killers, you know, by move makers and action takers. It doesn't necessarily happen overnight. But if you make a decision, it's kind of like if you're shopping for a car and you decide you want a red four door Toyota Prius. All of a sudden, once you start researching them, you go driving, you're like, they're everywhere. There's one, there's one, there's one. When you actually change your radio station and your TV frequency to say, I'm going to pursue a circle that's encouraged, that's making moves, whether it's up or down, whether there's challenges or not, you know, there's many people, Ray, you're so inspiring to me because of all the challenges you face with health and you, you model this. There are so many that would, in your exact same situation, given to despair depression, discouragement. And what's amazing is you're human. And so you're not any different than them. You for sure have felt all of those despair, depression, discouragement. You like everybody listening to this have had days where it's, it's been overwhelming and it's been too much, but you are a fighter and you're a man of faith. And so even if you get knocked down, you keep getting up and your faith is tangible. It's transferable and it's impacted my life and it impacts your community's life. And so we will overcome and we will get through this year and the challenges ahead of us, but not by accident. I, that's, that's not, that's actually not pie in the sky, Pollyanna. We, the reason we will is because we get educated and we get in the right circle and we work on our mindset and we are intentional about starving our fears and feeding our faith. Can you see why I love this man so much? This, this spirit, this knowledge, this information, it's, it's all those things. And it's, it's also the way you live your life, Sean. And I, I appreciate that about you so much. I, I was just having a conversation with one of my dearest friends a little earlier this morning about how we cultivate the people around us that are going to support that mindset. Do you have any thoughts on what people can do if like they, they come to you and say, well, yeah, but the people I spend the most time with are like in my family and they're all super negative. And uh, they, 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 my wife said to me, don't get your hopes up. And I'm, a, I'm like, I'm not saying this is me. I'm just saying, okay, it's been me. I, I got to get my hopes up. Mm -hmm. We all want to get our hopes and it's, it's good for us to do that. But how do we, how do we work with like, maybe we're not surrounded by the most positive people in our family and our church and our friend group. How do we, how do we fix that without jettisoning people from our lives? I, I mean, number one, you have the opportunity to limit. So listen, I mean, we're, we're called to love everybody. Family is, is so important but it's still your decision to determine how much time you spend and where where you really linger. And so number 1 you have the opportunity to limit any kind of negative relationships or individuals that pull you down. I think it's also important to have a, a demarcation of of different types of scenarios you're in. In some scenarios there's there's relationships that drain you and some re relationships that are, there may be a little more neutral. You don't, you're not going to probably be built up nor torn down. And that's, it's great. You're, it's somebody that you could just kind of connect with on. And then there's going to be some relationships that build you when, if you, the goal would be to potentially decrease limit anything that's tearing you down and to increase. So even if, and then you have to work with your initial situation. So you're like, well, I just, I have to be in this situation this much. Well then do your best to compensate by saying, how can you intentionally increase the relationships, scenarios, and situations where you're going to be built up? Secondly, though, I, I do think that there is a point where 
you just have to make a decision that in life we get what we tolerate and your life is never going to really change if you don't raise your standards. You know, a few years ago, many now, we've been married 17 years, my wife and I, we, every year when we're living in the Northwest, would go to Thanksgiving with some extended family members. And we would go up, and what was so weird was we'd get into the situation and They were just, this wasn't even our closest family, right? It was more distant cousins on my wife's side. And we would go into this environment and it was just very weird and discouraging. Um, Nobody would ask uh, about us, um, ask questions about us, engage with us. We tried to start conversations. People didn't really want to like engage with them. It wasn't, they weren't necessarily saying anything negative, but we were just so confused. We were like, are you not interested? It was so hard to get conversation going. Um, And and it sort of felt there was a vibe. We've all felt the vibe, different vibes in family situation where they were kind of annoyed we were there or they weren't excited or we didn't feel that that love or that encouragement or whatever. And, And then we would leave, we'd get into our car and we'd start driving. We'd be like, what just happened? You know? And, and why did we subject ourselves to that? So one time we're driving home and we just made a decision. We just thought, okay, we are now our own family unit. This is also, I think something I had, it took me a long time to learn as a husband in a marriage was also like, I started a new family. I have cleaved to my spouse completely. Now we have a couple kids. We are our own family unit. And you know who comes first? is my wife and then my kids and it's the kennel home and so i'm so grateful after ups and downs with parents on all sides we have uh great relationships with our our parents but there's been years where we haven't why because we drew boundaries and we raised the standard and we just made a decision at times where we weren't going to tolerate toxic behavior and i want to be key here not just like our preferences toxic behavior Like there was a point in time when my Sonia's mother-in-law, my mom was not treating my wife right. And I will admit, I was also not handling that right. I, I shouldn't have been tolerating that. Thank God she didn't. And she drew a boundary and it was the best thing she could have ever done. Now, I know many listening to this, maybe there's some things where maybe you did that and there was never reconciliation. We went through two years of it being really awkward and there being some distance because of that conflict. But on the other side of standing in truth and drawing healthy band boundaries and Sonia raising her standards and saying, listen, love, respect, kindness, the way words, the way you use your words, it's just not going to be okay if you're making cutting remarks uh, about me or you're, you're doing certain behaviors. And as a result of raising the standard, all of those relationships are better than they ever have been before. It's not a guarantee when you're trying to be a peacemaker, key word. I'm a peacekeeper, diplomat, pushover. I'll let people walk on me. My wife, she's a peacemaker. And sometimes it takes war to get to peace. I think that it's about raising your standards. And so we started to say, like, I'm an adult, man. We're adults. We don't have to go to Thanksgiving anywhere that it's toxic or weird or we're not appreciated or honored or respected. We can, we are perfectly content and happy celebrating in our own home uh, and tapping into our own joy uh, uh, and, and, and creating an environment where our values, and that's what I would ask, what are your values? Do you need to raise your standards? And if there's someone in your life that is dishonoring and disrespecting you, dishonoring your values, uh, then then you might need to start drawing some boundaries. And then finally, I think you could pay for it. I think that to to pay to get in the room uh, around people that are um, lying killers, uh, that's probably one of the biggest unlocks for me is it sounds weird, but I know that people in your world understand the power of the mastermind, the power of investing in and in getting into rooms like that. I actually think it's one of the absolute best ways because it's a filtration system. There is 99% of the people in the world would probably think it is ridiculous to pay for a mastermind. Yep. Thank God for that. 
because the 1% of people in a mastermind are the most incredible people that you meet. And, and the reason where your treasure is there, your heart will be out also because they've invested their treasure with a group of people. You are automatically, it's a filtration system of people who want to level up, want to learn. And I've discovered on the other side of that test of that filtration system is some of the most humble, generous, ambitious, you know, productive, encouraging type of individuals. And so, you know, number one, I think it's about limit negativity, increase positivity in those relationships. Number two, it's about raising your standards and maybe having some hard conversations and just deciding that you're just not going to tolerate certain things. You're going to love everybody, but you're going to be selective and realize every time you say yes to a date with your four negative friends that always just, they, they don't talk about, you know, anything productive. It's all gossip. It's all whatever. And you just feel like, like you just wasted time after whatever. That was your decision to say yes to that. And in doing so, you said no to a conversation on a phone with an uplifting friend, or you said no to getting more sleep, or you said no to something that could have been positive. And then think about in 2023, how you can invest in your network because the momentum on the other side is the returns are a hundred X, a thousand X, when you start to get around courageous people, positive people, people of, of high character, um, and, and the momentum builds from there. 100%. And I can tell you that 90% or more of the financial success we've had in our business has come from me investing in mastermind groups and trainings that were, to me at the time, outrageously expensive. But that's where most of the fruit has come from because of that raising your standards factor about who I'm gonna to listen to, who I'm gonna let speak into my business and my life. That's been so important. One big question we haven't gotten to, I wanna to get to this before we have to stop, because I could, I could talk to you all day, but I'm pretty sure that wouldn't work out for one of us. Um, that is, what about people who might watch this or listen to this and say, well, sure, Sean, it was easy for you. You started like eight years ago, 10 years ago. It was easy then. It's saturated, I can't do that now. YouTube's not gonna work for me. How would you answer that question? What's unique about that is sub supply and demand is is a real thing, and uh, and this is what the data says. Because it'd be easy, it'd be easy for me to just say it's not too late to start a YouTube channel, go for it, and you'd be like, yeah, you want to sell your book, dude? Of course you're going to try to hype people up. Okay, fair enough. I, I appreciate the skepticism. So let's look at the data. There's 2.6 billion monthly active users on YouTube, and can the hunger for quality content is exploding so it would be ignorant to say that there isn't rising competition or more competition than there's ever before but what the data tells us is that consumption is higher than ever before there is a voracious demand for content there is still more demand than there is supply secondly you could say, okay, is there any other, is there case studies of people who are starting now that are succeeding? I think about Larry Chung in less, in, in 10 days, he grew a thousand subscribers, personal finance channel. Um, in six months, he grew 53,000 subscribers. And in a year and a half, he grew a hundred thousand subscribers. Now is personal finance a blue ocean? Are you kidding? Personal finance is incredibly competitive on YouTube, yet in not 10 years ago, not five years ago, he just did it recently. There is a one of our Video Raked Academy members, which is our YouTube online course, has a whiskey sipping channel. And he just posted it in our uh, group. He's into like collecting whiskey, fine whiskey, all this different stuff. And he just hit 100 subscribers in 45 days starting a brand new channel. And this is the last 45 days. I learned that yesterday. And uh, following our methodology, but looking at the kind of content he's creating, like I go, bro, just keep the momentum going. This thing is going to work. And so I posted four screenshots of student results yesterday from new channels in our Slack thread for our team of um, different people that are getting momentum. And so the facts to know specifically about YouTube, I know that sometimes other platforms, organic reach, it, there might be a time where like it kind of is, it dies off. YouTube is unique 
That is not the case. It's not even about subscribers. It's actually about click-through rate and average view duration. If you put out good content, you ultimately can break through from scratch. Janelle Elena was a great study. She went from zero to over a million subscribers um, with only three videos in a matter of weeks, which I I'm happy to talk to the skeptic. Well, good for that lucky individual. You know, she she probably got lucky. She probably had everything going for her. Well, not true. She had a, a six months of preparation and strategy and learning and creating a plan. She tapped into a proven and a profitable niche, which we don't have time to get into that. Of course, market viability, total addressable market, like really, you know. But what it revealed was that if you put out a great video, the YouTube algorithm will get it in front of video uh, consumers that want to... Um, uh, viewers that want that type of content and it's happening from scratch. Saturation is a myth and YouTube is the most generous platform to new creators. If you learn the perfect video recipe, if you understand who you're trying to reach, the creator who understands the viewer best wins. If you, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's possible. And while I, you probably won't get a million subscribers in a month like Janelle Elena what if you just got 10% of that? That's 100,000 subscribers in a month. Ray, it's taking you forever to get to 10,000. It took me forever too. So what if you just got 1% of that? That's the kind of thing that becomes incredibly uh, impactful. Can you grow 10,000 subscribers in a couple of years? Yes. Is Are you the only copywriting channel on YouTube? No. And competitors are actually, competitors of competition should actually not be discouraging. They should be encouraging because it's proof of market interest. If there are zero other channels like the channel you want to create, it actually is probably a bad idea. If there are other channels that have 10,000 subscribers, 25, 100,000, that actually proves there is an audience on YouTube and on the internet consuming video content that want that. And because the way the YouTube algorithm works, you're you getting videos if somebody else wanted to talk about copywriting the way the suggested algorithm works and the recommended algorithm works it means that their new videos can get recommended alongside of yours it's what's on people's homepage when you go on your homepage whatever you like to watch is there personal development cat videos so i know i threw out a lot kind of like trying to condense my entire you know programs and books into like 5 minutes uh but uh, the the bottom line is what the data shows, what our what we're seeing with students. It goes back to this: ten spies might be saying, "Ah, it's too late." Uh, you know, YouTube's too hard. It's it's just not going to work. Sure, there's opportunity there, but but we're small in our own eyes. Meanwhile, there's the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, that are like, "No, we could do this." Um, but it, it, it's going to have to take strategy. It is about confidence and it is about just getting started and then making sure you level up as you go and learn the skill sets and the mindsets for what it takes to win on YouTube in a 2023 world. So powerful. If you, if this has caught your interest, if you think maybe this is it, I'm going to tell you, it's not, maybe it is it start with this book, YouTube secrets, and then look for think media on YouTube. I'm a paying member of the Video Ranking Academy. It's how we got to 10,000, how we'll get to 100,000, whenever that's supposed to happen. It's how we'll get to a million, whenever that's supposed to happen. That's what's gonna happen. There's one guy I turn to for authoritative wisdom on this topic, and it's Sean Cannell. Sean, where do people go to follow up with you to see your videos, to get your content, to get in your course, et cetera? Yeah, so if you, uh, you could go to, uh, think media on YouTube and start there for, you know, Oh, what camera do I use? You know, can I get a microphone for my smartphone? All your questions are there. We have, I think a thousand free videos, um, and, and really high quality to answer your questions. And then I'm everywhere on social media. Sean Cannell rhymes with YouTube channel. If you're really serious and like Ray, you want to join video ranking Academy, uh, join VRA.com is, is just the link that we share on like our web classes and stuff with a, a steep discount off of kind of the public price. Um, and so, yeah, I appreciate you, Ray. Thanks so much for having on and thanks for leading the charge and just showing, I mean, congrats on 10,000 subscribers that has taken a lot of work. Um, but it's worth it and it compounds. YouTube is like a fine wine. It gets better with age. YouTube is a marathon. It's not a sprint. But all the accolades 
are on that back half as you start getting that momentum and you're feeling that now it's not it's not just a one to one game you put a lot of extra energy in when you were starting um now you have the momentum of your channel that it views that it gets every month but you keep adding to that and uh it's really encouraging to see your journey my friend i respect you i'm so grateful for you and thanks for having me on same to you my friend i love you i honor you thanks so much for being here and sharing with our people